Ooh, okay. I don't take syrup to be nervous. He keeps it in. He keeps it concealed very well, but... I've never taken him to be a nervous player. Interesting. It's a... It's something that comes out once he reaches the later parts of bracket sure. in uncomfortable situations. I know he talked about it at a big house when he lost that to Onan from winner's side. Uh, that was like uh, getting in his own head can be a really uh, a problem for Syrup in those really intense moments. But if Syrup locks down, he can beat anybody in Tri-State on a good day. Think yeah. like a big element that could help this comfortability is the 6-0 game count yeah. in Syrup's favor for the yeah. last three sets. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. Syrup may suffer from this, but PK Chris also kind of suffers from this. I know you do hear the trash talk from him, but he does get kind of nervous and then doubts himself in important matchups. And this is going to be a big one. He has not beaten Syrup at all. And they're now fighting each other in winners' finals, and he really wants it. Adding insult to injury, too. This is also Syrup's like first character ever, too, on the nest. So not only are you playing somebody who's very proficient on the seat, but you're playing someone who understands the exact counterplay to your character. So this is going to be a very big test of patience, uh, specifically for Chris here. But if it's someone who's been having a great tournament today, it is Chris. I mean, we saw from his match with Mr. E as well. Just everything is on point and everything's ready to go so it will just be about the young ones kind of being able to kind of lock in load and being able to kind of cement their combos and get their stocks yeah i think that it's two different like school of thought two different practice mentalities two different like general mentalities uh, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of differences and juxtapositions coming to a head that was insane by the way the double nil in order to get high up as well as be reversing one of them to turn around and find a uh, and threaten back air forcing chris to uh, to change up how he approached and gets forward air instead but syrup is so so proficient that he's never gonna drop the easy stuff let alone the hard stuff yeah no I've, have you seen the hours that he's put in this game? I think there was like a tweet out. Thousands. Like years of, yeah, thousands. Thousands. And when you compare that to the practice, I know PK Chris doesn't have nearly as much. He does a lot more sessions with like groups, with like Weezer, um, Smurf, Poster, Guy Guy, and like as practice partners. And he, that's how he honed his skills. While Syrup has a lot more individual practice and a Wi-Fi as he well, because he started out with, as a Wi-Fi grinder. And just two different schools of coach. And Chris definitely Ooh. popping off right now. 33% on himself, but 58% and 71 now on syrup and counting. Yeah, finally finding a lot of traction once you're able to break that space. We saw a lot of good walls and mine carts from syrup, even a down air right there to try and force the issue. But once PK Chris finally found the opening, it was a little bit of a different game, but big deficit now you have to work around if you can't make something happen quick. 83% is a good spot to kind of get it started, but if you can't find that hit, you know, we can see Syrup kind of running away with it. I Ooh. love, I mean, you wanted a big hit, AG. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> I'm loving the way that <laughs> Syrup, <laughs> I love the way that uh, Syrup sends out a minecart, and then if we are able to pick it back up and either keep it at, as an active hitbox, we're keeping it, or we're just sending it off. I think it's really good kind of creativity of using our resources, but now PK Chris finds the forward air out of the corner, but now has to once again go around the jungle gym here, keeping, I mean, Syrup at bay, at least for the moment here. I mean, you have to watch out, right? We know that that diamond is about to come in, but these PK fires coming from platform, it's nest B and B at this point, but you have to be able to find your PK fire into the combo, and that's the harder part. Yeah, especially with these blocks all around, like the minecart, as you're mentioning, letting it launch uh, after getting out of a block makes it really hard to anticipate the PK fire. Uh, makes it really easy, rather, to uh, activate the PK fire in a position Chris doesn't want it to. And then using those, uh, not only are the minecarts used to disrupt the ground space and threaten a hitbox and uh, allow Syrup to gain extra height very quickly, it's also used for that phantom block state that it is so prominent, allowing Syrup to turn around in midair at any 
moment that he needs it to just such a multifaceted tool that Syrup is using to great effect. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the Phantom Blocks. Like, that has been the game changer for Syrup right now. His ability to just turn around and just do back air out of command, as you saw, he was able to win the game, do that right there. And we're going on Talon City, which I think is a great counter pick right here. It does give you a bit of space, but it gives Syrup not the best materials to mine right here. Right, right. That was pretty important in that last game, too, because Chris ran into a lot of walls that were really hard to break because of some higher density, higher HP blocks. See how that changes here in the game. We have the more space to work around. And the minecarts, though, kind of make it hard for Syrup to, well, make it hard for PK Chris to get around all of the stuff that Syrup's doing, whether it's on the ground. But air to air is looking fine. Really good yeah. change of pace. Yeah, I'm loving the way that PK Chris is actually the one holding center stage with something as so simple as an aerial, right? We're seeing a lot of nares. We're seeing a lot of back airs from center stage. And I like how Chris is just respecting Steve at this point to say, you know what? I know what you can do up close and personal. If I just keep you spaced out from me, at some point you are going to get impatient enough to run in. But it is going to be the back throw starting out here from Syrup. And now it is all PK Chris. How do we get back to center? Because it seems like that center zone Ubel is where we find our Zen the most. Yeah, and I want to piggyback off something uh, Reggie said to tie into all of these different like thought the thought processes. It's all about space, and what PK Chris has found some success in with these air to airs that AG mentioned was just having more airspace to go around, less block, uh, less uh, opportunities to deal with blocks means more opportunities for PK Chris to put out something like a back air or a neutral air and force Steve to deal with it. Something that Zero is looking to play into, uh, but dangerously slow to do so. Yeah, an amazing pressure right there, using the invincibility against Syrup right there with the PK fire and just allowing more of that down to pressure. But Chris is in a bad situation, losing a stock right there to Syrup, and Syrup now just having a commanding lead with only 24% and diamond right there. and. More counting. Yeah, it's racking up very fast. Good presence of mind, too. I love standing on the anvil. A little extra knockback on the left hand side, but big damage right here following the air dodge with the grab, keeping it up, and really interesting interaction off of the block. PK Chris on the back foot. Despite being in center stage right now, still feeling a little. I'm worried, personally. <laughs> I, you know me too. <laughs> Honestly, I, I want to bring it back to a point that we were talking about a little bit earlier where sometimes Steve puts you in the saw trap and there's just nothing you can do. And every single time I see this last stock, I could just feel that Syrup is looking for something, right? Two columns set up. It's like, what could Syrup possibly be looking for? Chris is definitely not out of it until you absolutely are. But I feel like Chris is turning around to Long Island sitting right there and saying, what do I do, man? Yeah. Because, Reggie, this is your region. What do you do at this point? Uh, you pray. To, like, I feel like that's God. been the answer from every <laughs> caster all day. It's like, what do we do? Yeah, uh, that situation right there, it was actually an unblockable. He yeah. puts the... Unblockable, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he puts the puts the block inside yep. you and it just takes away so much of your shield once you put the anvil right there it'll just either pop your shield or kill you <laughs> can you talk about the music real quick <laughs> i'm like i'm not really isn't and that isn't that four hits of anvil by the way like when you put yes. the block you yes. do anvil yeah. drop yeah. landing yeah. drop anvil landing. drop landing. and in that situation too all of ness's best options generally involve jumping out of shield maybe throwing an aerial that's not going to be Anvil. You can't roll to the left because of the block. It covered so many different things. Great, great improvisation from Syrup. We're going to have to see some of that creativity on the other side of the sticks, though, if DK Chris wants to bring us to some more games. Yeah, I think it's very interesting how this, uh, all the casters are jamming out right now to the very hype uh, Game 3, what very well could be Chris's last game and winner's song. Um, I have to say, we're going around the stage list at this point because we saw the biggest stage. Now we're seeing a little bit more of like a close quarters combat stage. But uh, alas, the result is still leading us the same where Chris is kind of, you know, trailing in the beginning and we have to hope for a way that he's able to at least recover here to get something started the down tilt into the down smash there's so much lag of after hitting the down tilt that it's just a perfect connection from Sarah. the amount of hit stop from down tilt connecting with pk rocket allows you to down smash before he could grab ledge like that's that's character knowledge not only of your character but your opponent's character too and then you follow it up with 55 75 percent unanswered yeah. You say opponent character, but he also played Aww. this character beforehand. 
So it's both of, both of the Mario's characters. He's taking claim. And man, this is what a way to tough. go out, right? You <laughs> might as well have picked taps for the stage music. Yeah. <laughs> like, this Instead is, of this happy yeah, metal music. Yeah, this is it's something great. else. Keeping that pressure up, it's so rough right now. Ness, a very fun character to watch in the advantage state, and a very sad character to watch in the disadvantage. But <laughs> cheer up, everybody. It just got a little bit better for PK Chris. Yo, he's gone. He's, he's uh, on the road. He's on the road to sex one stock at a time, you know? Yeah. I absolutely just like cannot get over the music thing because it's just so funny. Oh, there he goes. Still, though, it could be edge guard moment here. Up tilt back air, not going to do it just yet. So here comes Syrup trying to line up for a couple of tricks, man. He, he always puts on such a good show going for the ledge trump. Not going to be able to find anything. I like just the complete eject here. But the thing is, where do you even go where Syrup has all of the answers? And that is going to be 3 0 for Syrup. We'll be seeing him in great. Brands. Yeah, earlier, Lyric, I think you referred to some of the Steve. Oh, know, the saw trap? No, no. Oh. When you call it a jungle gym. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if there's one person I would trust to go through a jungle gym, it would be a child. <laughs> but if there's one person who shouldn't be in a saw trap, <laughs> it's, a child. it's also a child. <laughs> so, really unfortunate for PK Chris. You got it, AG. <laughs> got it. It was such a very rough situation to get around. Like the offstage play. <laughs> Brian, was Brian. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> oppressive. I did like that one. That one hit the VIP suite. That the glass is broken yeah. out in the stands. I love. We got one dinger in the set. That's all you could ever ask for. But it was truly just a really kind of rough matchup. You know, PK Chris looking a little lost, and Syrup was just kind of able to display not only that knowledge of Steve, but of course the knowledge of how to you know exploit the weaknesses of Ness, which we saw pretty much a whole slideshow. Of. Yeah, no. Fantastic job from Syrup. And looks like he will be winner's side grand. Who do you guys think will make it to him? Like we still have PK Chris left. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out the I'm gonna throw out the kind of the wild ride here. Yeah. It might be double Steve Kranz. Interesting. Depending yo, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys hired me to like actually make predictions yes. here. Yeah. It very well could be. Uh, but that will be, of course, Syrup going in to grants as one of two New Jersey representatives here in our top four. And alas, we will be seeing our second one now as it will be quite literally the old guard and the new guard representing New Jersey. It will be Rivers 